Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann and it's almost the end of April, but I am squeaking in under the wire with my March reading wrap up right before the end of the month here. Um, so March was a fantastic reading month for me. I read a lot of books that I really enjoyed and I read a total of 12 books, although um, three of them were um, manga and one was sort of like a book of um, comics, I guess. Um, so anyway, let's dive into what I read. Um, so books one through three, we're just going to talk about Full Metal Alchemist, um, volumes four, five, and six. So this is a really famous manga. There's also an anime series um, of it as well. And uh, we follow two young boys who practice um, the magical art of alchemy. And um, they had a pretty traumatic event in their childhood where, um, and this is like on the first page of the first book, um, their mother had died and the older of the two brothers um, tries to use alchemy to bring her back to life. And that's forbidden, it goes against the laws of nature, so um, it sort of rebounds. And um, he loses, I think he loses his leg and his little brother is going to die, but they're sort of in like this limbo space. And so the older brother actually then also trades his arm to pin his brother's body, pin his brother's soul into sort of the nearest vessel, which is a suit of armor, because of course this family has a suit of armor lying around. Um, and so then the series of the books is they're a couple years older. The older brother has studied really hard and become um, a, sort of a government alchemist. And they are roaming the countryside of a fictional country, uh, getting into trouble, occasionally helping people um, in, in their quest to try to fix their bodies, get their original bodies back, especially get the body back of the younger brother. Um, and so it's just a very sweet story. There's a lot of really heartwarming moments. There's a lot of cool action. Um, and there's some longer storylines that are taking a long time to resolve. Um, and actually that would be like my one critique of these volumes four, five, and six is we didn't see some of the, the bigger plot arcs really move along very much in particular, whatever is going on with, um, there's a set of villains that are named like lust and gluttony and envy who have been running around for this whole time. And so I'm like, okay, we're also missing a few more of the deadly sins and we haven't had any extra show up since early in the series. And we still don't really know anything about the motives of these people or where they're coming, who they, where they're coming from, who they are, what they're doing. So the series is very, uh, well done and heartwarming. There's some funny moments, um, but that lack of movement and the overall plot is starting to, um, uh, not sit quite well with me. So I'm not really sure at this point if I'm going to continue on with the series. Um, so we'll just see if that develops. These are things I've just been picking up from the library occasionally because my daughter likes to walk through um, that particular section. And so it usually catches my eye. Uh, but we're going to be moving in the next few months. So that may not happen serendipitously like that again. But anyway, so I read volumes four, five, six, still enjoyable. Um, then I read Honors Reserve by Michael LeBron, and that was a buddy read with um, John at Hey Y'all Listen Up. And that was actually a book that I started for the Black Author Tuber Readathon in February, where we were trying to highlight Black Author Tubers. So, um, for the most part, indie published uh, Black authors who make YouTube content. Um, and I will link to Margaret Pinard's channel down below. She was the main organizer of that. And I will link to our wrap up video where you can hear about what everyone who participated in that readathon, a little bit about what we all read. Um, but anyway, Honors Reserve with John um, is a pretty short book, almost a novella length, um, but it's, uh, it's billed as space opera. And it, it really, I don't really know exactly what the definition of space opera is, but it was definitely like an epic um epic sci-fi story. There were a lot of space battles. We have a very plucky main character. And this was the first book in a series of books um, called The Galaxy Mavericks. I think I'm if I'm remembering the series name correctly. And so each book follows a different main character, a maverick. Um, so I think somebody who's going to be doing some heroic things. So John and I both thought this book was a really solid read. It didn't hit like the five star category, but we both thought the story was really good. The plot was good. The character was good. Um, and, uh, and yeah, just a solid short book to sit down with and enjoy some, you know, action packed sci-fi. Um, and I think we're going to continue with the series as soon as I answer a Voxer message. 
from John telling him when I'm ready to start the next book. So we will definitely be continuing, continuing with that. Um, then the next read, book I read is uh, a book of comics, and that's Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien 2 by Johnny Sun. And I did do a standalone review of that, so I will link to that down below if you've heard of that book and are interested in it. And if you haven't heard of that book, um, it was just so sweet, like soulful comics. Um, the, the very vague premise is that there's a little alien who's been sent by his alien people to Earth um, to study humans and he lands on earth and I think the first thing that he sees is a tree and so he thinks the tree is a human and he goes through the comics in the book and he's meeting more humans <laughs> which are life forms on earth and he meets everything except an actual human um, and he just has these really sweet interactions with all of these other animals and I'm giving him he pronouns but actually I don't think we know the gender identity of the alien so I should not be doing that um, but yeah just very sweet and then we're getting just uh, neat little observations on what it means to be alive on Earth. So each of the animals that the alien is in interacting with just has these nice little, like, meaningful snippets that, that really made me sort of think about for a moment, you know, what it means to be alive um, or what it means to be a conscious being. So I um, really loved that. I actually immediately went out and bought it as a gift for my best friend and shipped it to her. So highly recommend. And again, you can go check out my video um, where I do actually show some of the comics um, in the book. Okay, so then I read... Um, a novella by Adriana Herrera, who's one of my favorite romance authors. Um, and this was a novella I got for free um, through her author newsletter. So I, I am now like, I'm a huge fan of author newsletters now. I've been signing up for a lot lately. Um, and uh, yeah, and it was just, it was lovely. It was one of my favorite sort of tropes. It was um, two men who've been best friends for a very long time. They actually now work together. And uh, one of them has had a crush on the other one for a very long time. Um, and uh, that one has known he's has known for his whole life that he's gay. And they had had a little bit of an awkward moment several years ago in high school, but got through it. And um, he thinks his best friend is straight, but his best friend in the intervening time um, has grown up and sort of gotten to know himself a little bit and uh, realizes that he's that that um, that he's falling for his gay best friend. Um, and so there's just some sweet moments where um, the, the more hesitant one who'd sort of created that awkward moment in the past, like doesn't quite believe what is happening. And, um, and yeah, but they, they quickly come together because it's a novella and, uh, and it's just a very sweet love story. So I really enjoyed that. Um, okay. Then, um, I read Living Dead in Dallas by Charlene Harris, which is the second book in the Sookie Stackhouse series, which the TV series True Blood is based on. And this was part of a group read um, and I can never remember the channel name's Ange. Um, I think it's like Ange's bookish chatter or something like that. I'll link her channel down below. And also BookTube with Amy are the two people leading that. And I have not been active in the Discord at all, <laughs> which is too bad. I just have not had time, but I've been trying to read the books because I wanted to, to give these books a try for a long time. So I mentioned the first book in the series, um, Dead Until Dark, I think, in my February wrap-up. Um, which I enjoyed, but it was just sort of a, you know, mediocre read for me. So this book I actually enjoyed more. So, of course, we see more of Sookie Stackhouse. We see more of Bill. Um, Sookie is starting to get involved with a little bit of the wider vampire world a bit more. So she actually goes to Dallas on a job for the local Louisiana vampires. Um, and we see a little bit more of Sookie... Um, really sort of analyzing her relationship with Bill and realizing what some of the problematic parts of it are and sort of t starting to talk internally about how, the, how those are or aren't working for her. And I really appreciated that because that was the thing that made Dead Until Dark more of a mediocre read for me was I just couldn't really get behind Sookie and Bill's relationship. And so we just get to see just a little bit more of how she's thinking and feeling about it in book number two, which I really liked. Okay, and then the last book that I read, oh, that was the last book that was not a BookTube prize book. So then I read five books for the BookTube prize Octafinals, the first round of the BookTube prize. Um, and I have already uh, 
made a video that ranks those six books and just explains a little bit about each of them. So um, I'm going to say what these books are. And then if you want to know more about them, about my opinions about them, I suggest you go to that video. And then I've also um, released standalone review videos for two of them, which I'll say as I go down the list. So um, first of all, there was Brickmakers by Selva Almada, which I actually read in February. So you can go see um, me mention that in my February wrap up, but I would I would go watch the rankings video. Um, so then there was Nervous System by Lena Meruane, The Art of Losing by Alice Zenitor, Catch the Rabbit by Lena Bastashic, and Winter in Sokcho by Elisa Shua Dusapin. Um, and finally, The Slaughterman's Daughter by Yaniv Ichkovitz. Um, so the TLDR version is that I really, really enjoyed that group of books. Um, I got a lot out of all of them. And then the two that I really loved were The Art of Losing by Alice Senator and The Slaughter Slaughterman's Daughter by Jana Vichkovitz, which was my top ranked book in that group. Um, so yeah, you can go check out my BookTube prize ranking video, which I will link down below if you want to see brief thoughts on those six books. And then I have a standalone review video for Winter in Sokcho, which I will link below. And I also have a standalone video of The Slaughterman's Daughter, my favorite. So that's what I read in March. Um, I know it's been a few weeks, but if you're watching this video, how was your March read? Uh, what are you reading for April? And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.